All right, so one of the ways that we can work on varying timing simply with front flips or front toss, whatever you want to call it, is basically just varying the distance, okay? And there's numerous ways that you can do this, but the easier way is just to create a second plate. We didn't have one, so we threw the glove down to simulate the distance. So <clears throat> when Springer is um, feeding front toss, basically you're going to do a couple reps here and then a couple reps there. He's going to make the same exact feed, Okay, but you're going to obviously have a shorter distance, which decreases your reaction time, okay, which means you have to make decisions faster. Okay, now, a couple keys to this, pitch recognition is huge, right? It's a huge variable to hitting, and very few people work on it. In fact, when I watch high school players and under work front toss, they're swinging at everything. Okay, like literally they're swinging at everything. Very rarely do they take. And I think that, you know, you have to be able to establish your zone. You got to know what good pitches are and what bad. And you might even narrow it down to where you're working a specific part of the plate. Okay. Or maybe you were going to a two strike approach and you're going to widen, but you still got to have something that you're working on. So the big thing to me is with hitters, when they're working on hitting is they don't use their balance, you know, their internal balance. To, to help them determine balls and strikes. So if I'm looking fastball, okay, I'm sitting fastball, I'm ready to drive, and I get an off-speed pitch. The tendency is gonna be, once I'm in a position to hit, is, is I'm gonna feel myself wanting to go get that ball a little bit, okay? My, my chin, my chest, whatever, I'm gonna feel myself wanting to leak just a little bit. Well, I think when you can train your body instinctively to recognize that okay that's that's the spit mechanism spit that means you're spitting on that pitch you're taking it okay so and there again you know i'm not telling you that you have to keep two hands on the bat but i think that the longer you can or if you can swing all the way through with two hands i think there's some benefit to that because i think guys that swing one-handed and this all applies to this drill okay are going to chase more bad pitches because we can reach okay i also think guys that that let go have the tendency to start letting go sooner and sooner and sooner. like they don't even realize it but over the course of weeks you know especially at the high school level we're not talking about necessarily all superior athletes okay so you know habits have a way of creeping in and we don't even realize it right that's why we have to keep working on our swing every day otherwise we would just show up and play right and we'd be at our best so guys that have a tendency to you know let go have a tendency to start letting go sooner and sooner next thing you know they're basically hitting one-handed okay like if you were to break it down on film again talking more lower level hitters that that happens to so all these little things matter they matter okay so if we're just going to do a drill and your coach is going to feed you front toss and you just get in there and you're like yeah, yeah. you know you're just hitting everything you're feeling good about yourself you're getting a little bit out of that okay but you're not getting nearly as much as coming into a drill with purpose you know what i mean okay what are we working on here are we working driving middle we working away we working two strike approach we working finding timing well right now we're working finding timing so you're going to take about three swings back here and then you're going to move up to this plate here and you're going to hit off from here now this is really really short it's going to test your pitch recognition your timing okay you're going to have to be ready to hit the whole key is being ready to hit in time if he's letting that ball go and you know this as an advanced hitter but if if he's letting that ball go and you're you're still going back and the ball's on you you're going to have to do a lot of compensating or the body's going to try to do a lot of things to compensate to get the bat head there that aren't going to be good Okay, so it's almost well, like hitting from back there. You're going to be facing 85 hitting up here. It's 95 right with the same speed, right? And, and it's like I've always said the, the harder the guy throws the slower your feet need to be Right, it's it, it's still I believe that this move right here Just a little weight shift is the same move as this right here But your head stays quiet. And you're ready to hit. It's like oh, you gotta get your foot down. Well, no kidding you know, You're not gonna hit like this with your foot up in the air But when the guy's throwing like like, you know nowadays everybody throws 95 to 100 when I played, there was about five. Like we had like Dibble and Mark Wollers, and you knew that this was a little extra. 
You know, it's like I said in my first CD, man, 92 looks like a water balloon when you see it every day. Well, now it's 96. It looks like a water balloon to these guys because they see it every day. And the more you see it, the more comfortable you're going to be off it. You know, there can't be any panic in our hitting. You know, and this is why I'm so into slow feet, fast hands, quiet head, taking a controlled balance swing, hunting speeds, playing with the right guy every day, having fun. See, too many players play this game like they're in a three-hour timeout, bro. Nobody's in trouble. Right? When you give yourself permission not to be perfect, when you give yourself permission, just I'm going to be the best competitor on the field, I'm going to have some fun, man. Gosh, it's, it's just, what's the alternative? <laughs> That's, oh, I'm going to worry about my stats. I'm worried about my bad average. It's all about me. And it's just brutal. And I, and I know I got off the subject. Yeah, no, but the thing is, when, so as we're doing this drill, when we adjust, I think a lot of hitters feel really good right here. And then they get up here and immediately their anxiety starts to go up. Like, I have to like do something extra. I gotta, it's too close. They start to panic. And we don't give ourselves enough credit for how quick we can really be when we swing a bat. I don't think people internally understand the timing and how late big league hitters actually commit to the actual attacking of the ball when they're facing 96 miles an hour. I, I don't think, I think, Conceptually, most hitters, high school hitters especially, don't understand that. Like, if you watch video from the top down, and, and you know you have the clay circle right at home plate, a lot of times the ball is just entering this, like from grass to clay, heading to the plate. You know, when when the hitter is literally going into their attack mode, you know, not the load, but you know that physical attacking of the ball. It's 96 miles an hour, and it's like you know. I don't know how far that is, eight feet away from the plate. So, you know, it's amazing how fast we can be. Timing, we just talked about how hard it is to, to work on timing, okay? Most guys in the cage are gonna stay right here. They're gonna take 50 front toss, okay? And then they're gonna call it a day. You know, you're- get in an uncomfortable situation. He's not, yeah. And this has definitely made him uncomfortable, but when you can do this drill regularly, and then he can even start to not just make the same type of pitch. You know how he snuck in that one back here? So now he's, he's changing a little bit. So you're, I mean, we really can take this to a whole nother level. What I want to encourage, play, be careful. Don't take on too much. It's kind of like a house. You build the foundation. Once you can do front toss here, then we start changing the location to increase the, the so-called speed from lack of reaction time, okay? Then once you can do that, then maybe we even start to vary the type of pitches. But I did see his heartbeat go up a little bit. All right, so go back to it here. Let's go like right where he's at. He, once he finds like two in a row that he's nutted, then let's move up. Here we go. Okay, I would encourage you to take that pitch. Did you feel your your internal balance, like yeah, you started it's, reaching. Hey, if it's a ball, take it. Yeah. Right? Zone me up. Good. Good. Atta boy. But in saying that, it's going to be, not if. Yeah. Now, you're not looking to make sure it's a strike. It's going to be a strike until it's a ball. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. You're on swing mode right now. Oh boy. Tough one up in the zone. Good job. Look for it up in the zone. You could look up and hit, go low, or rather look low and come up. Good swing, bud. Good. One more. Then move up. Okay. Now, nice and quiet. Breathe. Oh, did you? <laughs> Got beat just a tad, be on time. Good. That's great, buddy. Yep. Good. That's awesome. Good. There you go. Over to Hello. center fielder's head. Middle approach. Nice. Yeah. All right, no jumping, slow feet. Good job, buddy. All right, cut.